Hey there, Griff Hamlin here. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk to you a little bit about Open G tuning, using a little bit of slide with it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the tune Little Red Rooster, maybe a couple of other little, you know, common riffs or common tunes that go with the Open G tuning. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about the Open G tuning is that we're going to make it so that when I strum the guitar, it makes a G chord. And, and three of the strings, the fourth string, the open D, third string G, and the second string B, don't actually have to change. And so there's a lot of things that you can actually play if you just use those three strings you'll actually be able to get away with a lot. And if you had to play, for example, Little Red Rooster, and you wanted to use the slide, and you wanted to get that feel, but you didn't want to have to retune the guitar, if you stuck to the second, third, and fourth strings, you'd actually probably be able to get away with it. But that's kind of limiting, obviously. <laughs> so we're going to have, you know, have a little fun with it and, and make it work. So what we're going to do is the, the low A needs to go down to match the G. So I'm just going to bring it down. I'm actually going to go down a little bit too low and bring up to pitch. We always want to go up to pitch. So now I've got the fifth string is a G. My high E is going to go to a D. So I'm going to use the open D to, to match that. Again, go too far and come back. So now I have, you know, my low E, then a G, a D, a G, a B, and a D. So already, you know, I have a nice big full sound. But I'm going to take my low E and I'm going to bring it down a little bit too low and then back up. The reason that we go a little bit too low and then back up is because, you know, the string has to slide across the nut and it has to do it evenly. In a perfect world, it would, but in reality, it just doesn't. And I found that the guitar stays in tune a lot better if I go a little bit too low and then go up rather than expecting the string tension to pull it the exact right amount across the nut. So now what I have, a low D, G, another D, another G, a B, and a D. So if I strike the whole thing, I get a, I get an open G chord. Now, admittedly, I'm not going to use that low D a whole lot, but from the fifth string on, it's great. Now, one thing about playing slide in general and using these open tunings is that we're playing open position major chords, basically. So if I just strum, right, I've got an open G. If I go up a whole step with the slide, I'm at A, B flat, B, C. So the fifth fret is always gonna be the four chord. So the open, if the open is one, the fifth is four chord. Now the thing with the slide too, remember, is that I'm right over the fret wire. And I can give it a little rock. To make it to make it sound good. So I'm just strumming that and then the five chord is going to be at the seventh fret. And it's always going to work that way. And at the twelfth fret is going to be my octave. So I've got things like, you know, good old uh, bad to the bone. And all I'm doing here is the four and the flatted third. So I've got the fifth fret and I'm using kind of the middle two strings. But again, if, if I hit an extra string, it's okay. So I've got open, fifth fret, open, third fret, open. And then if you hit the twelfth fret. And I can do it with just, like I could be accurate and just play the middle two strings. Or I can be really sloppy. And you can see that it, in neither way is, is it necessarily bad. <laughs> you know, you, you just don't have to be because you've got this whole thing, it's tuned open. 
you, you, it's hard, you know, none of the none of the notes are going to be bad. So if I just kind of bang away on it, and that's, you know, the George Thurgood approach is, is, you know, I mean, he's a great guitar player, don't get me wrong, but he's a really aggressive player where, uh, you know, he's not being all that persnickety about exactly which strings he's hitting, okay? So, you know, you got something like that. A little bit of shape goes a long way. But then for something like Little Red Rooster, it's that same thing. Fifth fret, third fret, open. And then what I'm doing right here is just hitting on the third string, grabbing that um, third fret note on the third string, and then open, and then the twelfth fret. And notice that on my right hand, my middle finger and my ring finger are touching the first and second strings, and I hope you can see that. And I'm doing that to keep them from, from making sound. You'll also notice that I'm doing a lot of little things like sliding up to the note. I don't go straight there kind of slide up to it. I sort of slide into it. I don't I don't make it, you know, pure and direct. I kind of slide into everything. Obviously, that's just a big part of the slide guitar sound. We can slide, so we do because it sounds good. All right. Now, Little Red Rooster in particular, I'm doing that riff. You don't have to just do the one string. You can do more. And then it goes up to the four chord for the vocal. I can't think of the word, but. And then the riff again. Go up to the four chord again, sing, and then we're back down to the riff again. So we haven't done the straight 12 bar blues. Okay, so you you know, in a straight 12 bar blues, we have one chord for four bars, four chord for two bars, one chord for two bars. Well, instead, we're going what might commonly be called a blues bridge type of thing where we're going from the four chord to the one chord. So the first two bars are the four chord, where there's vocal going on, and then we go back to the one chord, which is the riff. Again, call and response, right? We have the vocal over the four chord, and, and at that point, we're just holding, you know, letting the vocal do its thing, and then back at the one chord, we respond. <laughs> Then we go back to the four chord. Again, we just wait. We let the call happen. We let the, the vocal go. We respond. Then there's the five chord and the four chord, just like a standard turnaround. We respond. Okay, so we've basically got a 12 bar blues. It's just that the first eight bars are call and response on the four chord and the one chord between the vocal and the guitar. But once we get to the turnaround, it's five, four, and one for two bars. So that's a normal thing. So it's still, and also, by the way, a lot of times an extra bar gets thrown in there, <laughs> or, or two. There, you know, there's so many versions of this song. Uh, some of them are not slow, down and dirty like this. Like there's a, I think it's a Junior Wells version. It's actually kind of funky. There's a whole lot of different versions of this tune. So I'm just trying to show you some common things that go on in this song so that if you were going to play it at a jam or play it with a buddy, you guys are sort of on the same page for how it's going to go. There's a lot of options. <laughs> so if you're actually on a if you're on a gig or you're on a jam session, you got to open up your big ears and and just listen to what everybody else is doing and and you know try to stay with it. But it's it's not a super hard riff. It's actually a, a, a whole lot of fun. And like I said, you could do that 
without tuning to open G, you just would have to stay on those middle three strings. And I just really like the, you know, I like that big messy. I like to be able to really just get up there and get into it and, and not have to worry about, oh, I can't hit the first string or, oh, I can't hit the fifth string. I don't like to have to worry about it. So if you can tune at least the first and the fifth string into the open G fairly quickly, then you can have a lot of fun with that. So that's going to do it for today. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have some fun with it and play around with it. And I'll see you again real soon.